Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, Legacy here. Today I've got another video for you guys, and in this one we're going to be replacing the screen, or the digitizer assembly on an SMT580, I think this is? Yes, SMT580. So this thing has been damaged um, by the user, uh, which is a child, so they kind of stepped on it or something and it cracked. Um, and as you can see, the cracks are pretty severe all the way out to the end of the screen. Um, from the damage point here um, and it's really bad in this area to the point where it needs to be replaced for a child to use it because there's chips of glass that come out and then you could possibly puncture your skin uh, so we're going to try to replace this hopefully it's going to be successful um, but what we're going to do is basically power it off remove the whole digitizer assembly and then we're going to heat up the glass remove the top layer the cracked portion and then we'll replace it with a new one uh, which is going to be the same thing except it's brand new pretty much with no damage um, and that's not very expensive you can find it online and no problem just make sure it matches your LCD size or your display size and also make sure it matches the model of the tablet as well otherwise it might not function properly and you don't want that <laughs> so uh, another thing you're going to need is basically a set of tools um, that looks something like this some plastic prying tools um, some screwdrivers, this and that, just little things that you're going to need which will most likely come with the kit uh, with the new glass if you bought it on like Amazon or something, most likely it'll come with it so you don't got to worry about that. Um, but after we get the new uh, glass replaced we're going to basically put all the internals back together and then reassemble it and then give it a test. So before we do anything I want to show you the new um, display, the top glass layer. And I believe it does have the digitizer mixed in here. Um, that's hence this cable right here. Uh, you want to be careful with all the ribbon flex cables that are in here. They're very fragile. Um, the tiniest little touch will probably rip them apart. Um, so don't make any extra force that is unnecessary. And this is a really fragile, delicate type of replacement. So just be careful. It's really skinny glass right here. It's really thin. Um, and you just want to make sure that it fits the top of your screen um, size wise and as you can see it pretty much fits perfectly uh, matching the old screen and what you want to do is keep in mind that this flex cable is right here by my thumb is in this corner of the screen just in case you want to not break the old one um, or rip it um, in my case it's kind of you know unusable but if yours is still okay you could possibly save that flex ribbon cable which is up here if not, just, you know, I guess whatever you guys want to do. Um, another thing is that when you're prying the glass off here, there is a ribbon cable for this button, the home button. Um, and that is also the same, you know, it's fragile, just as fragile as everything else, or the other flex cable. So you want to make sure you don't damage that either. All right, so with that being said, let's just get right into prying this thing open and I'll show you what's inside. So basically what you wanna do, I've already done this step, but what you wanna do is get between the frame of the glass here, this little rubber piece here, um, and in between the back casing and you wanna pry it open with your plastic tools um, and then just run the plastic triangle tool type thing across the bottom here. Um, or the top either side just choose one side and start basically Making it wide enough so you can easily you know use your fingers to pry the rest of it open um, Don't force it if it's not working then you might have a lock that's still uh, latched in so use your plastic tools to you know Dislodge it before you pry it too hard um, At the end you'll just basically you'll feel it you'll it'll just start falling apart um, And that will lead you to this next step. So once that step is done the back casing can just be removed and then if we look at the back it's basically all the little electronics as you would expect um, and you want to be careful not to damage anything you want to power off the tablet uh, prior to this point um, make sure you're not poking at any electronics here none, none of the you know little chips and capacitors resistors don't mess with those um, all we need to do from this part on is uh, disconnect all these c ribbon cables here, remove them, or just disconnect and put them to the side for a second. Um, and then we're going to remove all these little screws that you see because we're going to take out the battery, we're going to take out the motherboard, um, and hopefully we don't damage anything in that process. Um, you want to be very delicate and careful 
Uh, the reason you want to remove all this stuff is we're going to heat up the other side um, to the point where the glue that's holding this glass in place right here, there's glue on the edges under the black uh, frame here. Um, and you want to basically melt that to the point where if you try to pry this glass out, it will easily just lift up. Um, and then you can just put the new piece in and voila, it's done. <laughs> so up until then, you want to be very careful to not damage anything. And we're going to just start by going ahead and disconnecting all these little flex cables here. Um, and just remember how everything is. Uh, don't lose any of these screws. Uh, you get a little magnetic tray or something or get at a flat surface. You can put them on where they won't roll off or something. But you just want to, you know, take it easy. Don't rush it. Um, do it patiently. So I'm going to open my tool kit here. So we're going to take the Phillips mini Phillips screwdriver. Um, let me try and zoom you guys in to show you all the little screws that are on there. We've got screws all around the battery and then we've got screws that are holding the motherboard in place too. So we've got some around the edge here and then we've got basically everywhere around, even some right here. So let's just go ahead and start disconnecting everything and then we will be back from there on. Alright, and just like that we've got the whole motherboard piece uh, removed. Try not to touch any of these contacts just in case um, you have static electricity. Um, you want to make sure you discharge yourself on something metal before you touch any of this, but I've already done that, forgot to mention it. Don't touch any of the little electronics or ICs that you see on here. Um, you could end up damaging this um, to the point where it's irreparable and you might have to just replace this whole thing. So keep this safe, put it to the side. Um, and there were approximately, if you can see right here, one, two, three, four, five, six screws holding that in place. And what I'm going to do is put these screws with that motherboard assembly, um, just so I know uh, that those were from the motherboard itself. And another thing is you're going to have to remove this whole flex cable that goes around the battery um, on the back side, as you saw earlier. Um, because you're going to be removed the whole battery. You don't want to damage this from it, like moving around too much. Just take it out. It's much easier to do. Um, now what we're going to do is start disassembling the battery, or not the battery itself, but removing the battery. Um, and then we'll just continue our way into the disassembly process. Okay, so we've got all the screws uh, loosened. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
Um, that's basically it. All around the battery, you just need to disconnect all this or remove all the screws. Um, and then we will be good to just remove the whole battery as well. Okay, so we've got the battery removed. Now we can put that to the side, put the screws with it. Um, I think it was around 10 screws that we removed. Um, so I'm just gonna put that to the side up here and we'll just leave it there for now. So this is the LCD's cable, uh, flex cable. Um, you wanna make sure you don't damage that. I believe we won't have to remove this, nor do we have to remove anything else that's in here. Now this cable right here is the cable I was talking about. Um, when you pry the glass out, you wanna make sure you don't rip it or if you don't really care and you're putting in a new one anyways you could just you know take it out and you don't really need it anymore but that's the cable that's on the new uh, glass just the glass um, panel as well um, and I believe that's for the digitizer uh, that's what makes your touchscreen work that still functions on mine it's just the glass is all broken and it's unusable so what we're gonna do now is take all of this and move over to the heating station uh, where we can heat it all up and we'll just remove the glass from the top. All right, so I've gone ahead and done a little bit of a thing that helps me out a little bit. I put a piece of tape over this flex cable. You don't want to press it too hard uh, where the tape gets stuck with the flex cable and you're going to have issues taking it apart. I kind of just push the little corners of the tape so um, it keeps the flex cable from flapping around while I flip the tablet or, you know, take a look at it over and over again. Um, so what we're going to do now is grab our heat gun. Uh, this might be a little bit loud, so I apologize for that. Um, maybe I'll cut out the audio or something. Um, but you want to basically just move around and just heat all the outside corners over and over until it's, you know, a little hot to the touch, I guess. Um, I'm still... Uh, kind of figure out if this one might be the right attachment or not, um, but I've got a square uh, blower attachment uh, That will guide it in a square pattern, which is kind of the shape of this. So we'll see how this works um, It'll spread it mostly at the width. It's kind of the same width as You know as the border around the tablet. So I'm assuming this might work out better than just like a big blower, you know heat gun attachment so you don't want to heat up too much around the home button I would think um, just heat up mostly on one side and slowly keep heating it as you're prying it apart. Uh, what I'm going to try to use here is the little uh, plastic triangle tool. Um, something like this. Uh, this. This is maybe skinny enough to get in between the glass and the border. And we'll hopefully pry it apart that way. Um, some people use playing cards. Uh, I don't have any so we're going to try to make work with what we have. And hopefully that will work out. So I'm going to actually um, start doing this with two pieces of these. If you have more, the better, because you can put one in and start prying it with the other one. But I think you m most likely already get two uh, with the kit if you got your tools with it. So the other triangle tool is actually much, much thinner than this one. So I would think that that is what we would like. Um, I also have the suction cup that came with it, which can help me hold the screen or pry up as well. Um, and then you just push on this tab to release. Um, I, d I have a doubt that this might not hold while it's heating up, but you know, it'll be something to help me pry um, or hold uh, while it's hot. So let's go ahead and get this started. All right, so the heat gun has begun. Um, let's go ahead and start heating this up. Also, I have this heat resistant mat, which is helping me um, keep me from damaging the table. So you might want to do something like that or go somewhere where you get where you can't damage the surface that you're working on. So like I said, just start heating up the surrounding areas.
So these tools are actually too thick for this job, so I'm going to use a little X-Acto knife to get me started. doing here is as I'm heating it up I'm trying to pry it um, this is actually much harder than a regular non-broken LCD to remove because you've got all these shards that are separating as you're trying to uh, disassemble the LCD or the the glass from the LCD um, I've also got shards of glass all over the place so you might want to wear gloves or something while you're doing this um, the reason I'm not wearing gloves is because it kind of always ruins my dexterity <laughs> it's always just tough to grab stuff and whatnot so I think it's better to do this without gloves but just wear gloves don't follow what I do you might cut yourself or something this also gets very hot this whole process And heat is the key to this. If you do not heat it up enough, you are going to have a nightmare. Um, make sure you have even heat to distribute it over all the glue. Um, that's going to help you pry it open. See, I'm not even doing much. And all those cracked pieces are peeling like nothing. Um, and we're almost there. Just like that. So there we have it. That is the cracked uh, display, glass display. Um, it is in shatters. Hopefully you guys can see this properly. It is shattered completely. Um, luckily, um, the damage is not done to the digitizer and else, or I mean the LCD itself. Um, make sure you clean it off. Just make sure nothing happens to this display. Um, this is practically a little monitor that you've got here. But that's basically it for the hardest part of this part or this project is taking this off. And as you can see, I did chip a piece. That's because it was already broken. It's just when I when I tried to remove this part, um, it was already separated from that piece. But that but that's basically it. I'm really proud of myself. This is the first time I've done something like this, um, and it worked out very well. Um, like I said, heat is your friend. You want to heat it up as much as possible. Alright guys, so we're back at the workstation here. We have uh, gotten the whole screen removed, all the glue removed, and we're ready to basically move on. I've cleaned up the screen already to get all the lint and fingerprints and all that stuff off of it, so it's really clean now. Um, now you want to <laughs> decrease the amount of movement you put around it as much as possible. 
you do not want to get lint all over this thing it's going to turn out to be a mess if you or you're going to be really disappointed if you get lint beneath the glass and in between the display so what we're going to do now is peel off the little backing plastic backing that's on the new display itself um, and it's good to do this with tweezers because the glue tends to stick to the new uh, plastic and you might end up peeling all that off together um, so let's go ahead and do this. Uh, make sure to get this uh, little cable here in through the slot that it's intended for. Um, just like this. And then we can slowly just lay it down. Um, you might want to actually test this before you put it together, but I think we'll be okay. Um, nothing different was done. Um, so we're just going to give it a nice push. Alright, now before I peel it off, um, I'm going to make sure the flex cable is good. The flex cable is good. We are um, progressing very well. Um, now before I peel this off, what I'm going to do is turn it around and um, start putting everything back together before I do anything to it. Uh, first thing we want to do is remove this piece of tape that we put. Careful not to rip the flex cable. You are going to cry. Trust me. If you've done if, if you've done everything up to this point, you want to be more careful than usual because it hurts if you mess something up. Okay, so we're gonna go in the reverse order as we did earlier. Who's that? It's a piece of glass. Okay, sir, you are not allowed here. So what we're gonna do is start putting everything back together the way we took it apart. So first, the last thing we removed was the battery. We're gonna set the battery in first. Make sure it fits in nicely. Do not give too much pressure if it's not um, fitting in, otherwise you're going to damage something. You do not want to do that. Um, so yeah, that's basically it for putting the battery in. Now what we can do is get all the screws and start screwing the battery back in place.
Boot up all the way and then we can test the touch screen. I think the home button is permanently pressed because of the screen protector over it. Okay, now we can just clean up and put the back on. It's just the reverse of how we took it apart. We can just push it into place. Alright, that's basically it. Thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, ask me in the comment section below. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, and that's basically it. I'll see you guys in the next one.